Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you gotta. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I am Adorkable Rachel, and it's time once again for another episode of Rachel Reviews, so let's just hop into it. Well, as many of you are aware, I'm sure, Stranger Things Season 2 just finally came out, so before we do a review of that, I thought it would be a good idea to look back at Season 1. I recently rewatched all of it in one sitting, and it's like everyone's favorite show right now, so why not? I swear though, Stranger Things is basically becoming like the Breaking Bad of this time or era. The first season of Stranger Things first aired on Netflix last July, and it tells the story of a young boy named Will who mysteriously disappears one October night. His mother, a police officer, and his three close friends are all trying to figure out exactly what happened to him. And it may turn out that a local organization, as well as a creature from another world, might somehow be involved. A young girl named Eleven with a shaved head also shows up around the same time, and she might have something to do with it too. And the majority of the show is basically these characters putting all the pieces together and trying to figure out just what happened to Will. The show also takes place in the 1980s in an Indiana suburban town, so if by chance you are a fan of movies or shows or books from that era, this show actually might seem kind of familiar to you because they very do obviously borrow a lot of stuff from that decade. Sometimes this show even feels like it was made in the 80s, but of course with today's technology. The mystery and supernatural elements feel like they came out of a Stephen King novel, while the whole idea of kids going on an adventure also kind of Stephen King esque but the way that it's framed here, it actually feels a lot more like it might have come from a Steven Spielberg type movie. They even hide Eleven from the parents by putting her in the basement. Huh. Really? So yeah, obviously the Duffer brothers who created the show drew a lot of inspiration from those stories and everything since I'm sure they grew up with that. But also, if you are a fan of the 80s or even grew up in the 80s yourself, you know this hit you in the nostalgia feels, right? You know it did. We are kind of living in an era where nostalgia is very much taking over our media, especially that of the 1980s and the 1990s, what with the 40 year rule being a thing. And you could maybe argue that this show's a little unoriginal because it borrows so much from that decade, but I actually think that there's a lot more to it. When I was trying to put this review together, I actually found that there was hardly anything negative that I could say about this show because everyone, including myself, just adores everything about this show. The characters are great, the writing's great, the acting's really great, and the setting, and the tension, and the build-up, and just everything about it is just so great. And even though a lot of the elements feel nostalgic, it surprisingly does as a whole feel very fresh and original. I don't think I've ever met a single person that said that they did not like this show or had issues with it. Some people have said they have mixed feelings about Winona Ryder's character and how she's too over the top when it comes to being worried about her son. Um, I'm sorry, would you not be frantic if your kid was missing? Well, I guess you're not fit to be a parent, sorry. Whether or not it made you uncomfortable to watch a frantic mother, I actually think that Winona Ryder did a fantastic job portraying somebody who was worried about the safety of her kid. She does sound a little crazy in this series and everyone around her thinks her crazy, but we're with her because we want to believe her. As crazy as it sounds, I believe that her son was in those lights, like she said. Don't mess with a mother who knows her kid is still alive. The show does focus on a lot of characters that are connected to each other in one way or another, whether it be the policeman or Will's brother brother or the sister of the friend, and then also the bully teenager who actually is a bit more compelling than I expected. But the main focus of the show does kind of tend to be more on the kids. And just like the kids in the new IT film, these kids do feel like real kids. They swear, they make inappropriate jokes, they get on each other's case, but they also look out for each other. Plus the child actors, they are just so cute and so adorable and so talented and they again they just feel like kids that you knew when you were young or maybe you were friends with these kind of kids especially if you were a nerd and when they find the girl 11 they don't really know what to think of her at first of course but then also when they find out that she has powers and might be able to find will she becomes one of them and it's just so cute and she is just a Freaking badass, man. When we see the typical young bullies come along and mess with our heroes, you know, Stephen King style, she just comes in and saves the day and all she has to do is just cock her head like this and she just breaks their arm and it's so satisfying and the payoff is awesome and just having some bratty stereotypical bullies like that just completely makes it worth it. Yeah, she's crazy. You come back here, she'll kill you. It's so 80s. 
I love it. Then you also have Will's brother and the sister of one of his friends kind of accidentally working together when they are trying to figure out what happened to her friend Barb. Never forget. You have all these characters coming across these strange circumstances, but then we find out that they are connected, so it does kind of intertwine itself organically. It just kind of works. Maybe it's the pacing or the framing, I don't know, but I didn't really find myself lost when we came across something new or when we jumped back to a different character. It just all kind of melded together really well. Also, side note, I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but the brother at one point does do something that would be considered kind of creepy, and it is creepy to some people but they do also kind of frame it in a way that's a little more innocent and sympathetic so actually kudos to them for that now a lot of people love so many different things about this show there's a lot of things to see a lot of things to embrace a lot of things to get caught up in but if I had to pick one specific thing that was my absolute favorite part of this entire show that's got to be that the boys are playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons in the very first episode now just Hear me out. Now, if you know anything about D&D, it's a very complex multi-person game. It's really nerdy, and also playing one is like developing your own fledged out story. They lament that they've already been playing for about 10 hours, but when they wrap things up at the end of the night, the gameplay all of a sudden starts to reflect what happens in the beginning of the show. So this is actually a really clever way to foreshadow what's to come. This also makes sense because the majority of the show takes place over a six day period, and most D&D games can actually take days to play. So the big, long, supernatural story of all these characters is kind of like a D&D game playing out in the middle of Indiana. They even refer to the creature that shows up as the Demogorgon, which is the monster that's in the D&D game. I don't think this is going to be a huge surprise when I say it, but this show is freaking fantastic, and it is no wonder that people are so obsessed with it. It's definitely one of the best, if not the best show on Netflix right now. If you haven't had a chance to see it yet, especially if you like sci-fi and mysteries and 1980s throwbacks, then what are you doing with your life? And even if you're not into that stuff, I still think you should give it a watch. No matter what age you are or what era you come from, there is just something so inviting about this show with its characters and suspense and twists and turns that it takes. And by the end, even if you don't have all the answers that you're seeking to some of the stuff that happened, I don't really feel like it's needed. The main focus of this show is these kids trying to find their friend and Sometimes you don't need any more than that. If they had done just this one season with eight episodes and just turned it into a miniseries, it would have felt pretty complete. We don't really need to know more than what they gave us. But if you did watch the show, then you know it ends on a bit of a cliffhanger, so there's definitely gonna be a lot more to this story. So if you're really curious about where Will went or where Eleven came from, or if you want even more explained, then that's what sequels, oh, I mean second seasons are for. So be sure to check out my next video where I'll be taking a look at the second season that just came out. Stranger Things 2. Strange. Harder. So those are my thoughts on the first season of Stranger Things. So now I want to know, have you actually gotten the chance to watch it yourself? And if so, what do you think? Do you like the series? Do you like the 80s throwbacks? Do you have any unique issues with the show? Also be sure to let me know, what's your favorite TV show or movie or book or whatever from that era? Also, besides Stranger Things 2, is there any other movie or TV show coming up that you want me to do a review of? Well, go ahead and leave your comments below. Be sure to like and share. And if you're new and like what you saw here, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also be sure to hit the little bell button down there to get notified when new stuff comes out because I make new videos every week. Bye, you Durga buddies. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.